I'm Dr. Namrata Zamale, junior resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, MGM Medical College and Hospital Level. My topic for presentation is hemiconvulsion hemiplasia under the guidance of Dr. Gayatri Patil, associate professor, and Dr. Ashutosh Chitnis, professor and head of department, Department of Radio Diagnosis, MGM Medical College and Hospital Level. Introduction. Hemiconvulsion hemiplasia epilepsy syndrome is a rare clinical syndrome of infants for early childhood associated with cerebral hemiatrophy transient or permanent epilepsy as sequelae to the prolonged status epilepticus, which was first recognized by French neurologist Henry Gustav. It is characterized by appearance of prolonged clonic epileptic seizures affecting one side of the body in the course of a febrile disease in children under age years. Three stages of HH syndrome include prolonged focal seizures, uh, development of hemiplegia of varying intensity, development of epilepsy, focal onset seizures with or without impairment of consciousness. There is characteristic holohemispheric global atrophy of the hemisphere contralateral to the hemiplasia, not restricted to any vascular territory. HHE syndrome has been linked with the prolonged febrile seizure. However, a mechanism, exact mechanism is still. Several factors for uh, pathogenesis have been proposed, which include prolonged febrile seizures with an accumulation of cell injury, predisposing genetic factors of focal epileptogenic lesions, inflammatory changes, and prolonged seizures causing impairment of the blood brain barrier permeability, prolonged seizure of long duration. Impairing metabolism of neurological uh, cells leading to the excitotoxic cell function. Aims and objective of this study are to study the utility of MRI as a method of imaging to diagnose patients with HHG syndrome in active as well as chronic stages. Objective is to study the characteristic of HHG syndrome and its features on MRI and to differentiate this disorder from similar appearing spectrum of disorders like transmissions in hepatitis. Materials and methods are as described. This is a descriptive case study in tertiary care center with 35 MRI studies in pediatric age group over the period of three months. Four patients with HHG syndrome were identified. Patients age ranged from 10 days to 12 years. All patients were scanned on Toshiba 1.5 Tesla MRI machine and HHG syndrome was diagnosed with characteristic MRIs. First case, a four-year-old male child presented to the emergency with uncontrolled seizures and loss of consciousness. He developed high-grade fever with vomiting five days back, which was followed with abnormal body movements involving left upper and lower limbs and loss of consciousness. The child had no formal significant history. Rest, uh, the child had developed normally and all the age appropriate growth and development milestones were achieved. MRI of this child reveals a diffuse cerebral edema involving the right cerebral hemisphere. It also shows T1 and uh, T1 ISO and T2 flare hypersignal intensities into the right cerebral hemisphere. There is mild mass effect in the form of compression of right lateral ventricle and medi media midline shift to the left side. Uh, this T2 flare hypersignal intense area shows restriction of diffusion on ADC and DWI images. There is subtle leptomeningeal enhancement involving the right, around the right cerebral hemisphere. These MRI features uh, were proposed as an acute phase of HHG syndrome. Differential diagnosis given was acute phase of Rasmussen encephalitis. Second case was a 30-year-old male child presenting to the emergency with complaints of high grade fever and vomiting since four days, followed with uncontrolled prolonged unilateral seizures involving left upper and lower limbs. There was no significant prior history. Patient was apparently all right till the onset of the fever. The MRI picture of this child revealed diffuse cerebral edema involving the right cerebral hemisphere. There was subtle flare hypersignal intensities involving right cerebral hemisphere, which showed diffusion restriction and drop on ADC mapping on right-sided cerebral hemisphere. These MRI findings were uh, with a mild mass effect and shift, midline shift to the left were diagnosed as acute phase of HHG syndrome. Differential diagnosis given was acute phase of Rasmussen in hepatitis. Third case was two month old female child presented with right sided weakness since one month. The child had normal vaginal delivery. However, febrile episode in postnatal period followed with status epilepticus resulted in NICU stay for one week. No prior history of prenatal insult or trauma was given by parents. MRI revealed diffuse cerebral atrophy involving left cerebral hemisphere. With changes of gliosis, there was lavender necrosis involving the left parietal occipital region. Incidentally, there was a uh, area of blooming noted in the left ventricle occipital horn, suggestive of intraventricular hemorrhage. The case was diagnosed as a chronic phase of HHG syndrome. Differential given was chronic phase of Rasmussen's encephalitis. But another case, a two year old male child presenting to the emergency with right sided weakness and chronic movements, the right hand and leg since four months, had a previous history five months back when he had an episode of hybrid fever, which was followed by prolonged, uncontrolled, abnormal body movements involving the right side. The child had been uh, treated uh, for the status epilepticus. Otherwise, previous history of this child was normal. 
T1 and T2 weighted images in this child showed diffuse cerebral atrophy involving the left cerebral hemisphere with areas of gliosis and significant dilatation of the left lateral ventricle. There was T2 and clear hypersignal intensities involving the cortical regions of the atrophied left cerebral hemisphere. So, uh, incidentally, there was uh, cerebral uh, uh, atrophy of the left cerebral peduncle was also noted. Discussion. The children with HHG syndrome usually are less than four years of age with history of concurrent febrile illness. This syndrome can be idiopathic, which has acute onset of fever and extracranial infection, or symptomatic onset, which is associated with fever with some primary insult. In the case of HHG, a mature cerebral tissue of child develops unilateral ictal discharges, which is uh, resulting in the excessive neuronal activity via NMDA receptor. That causes increased calcium levels, resulting in cytotoxic edema and then necrosis. Salient features include prolonged unilateral seizures, which may be associated with autonomic symptoms. Acute phase of epilepsy will result in the cerebral edema. The MRI shows cerebral edema of subcortical white matter and prominent diffusion restriction with affected cerebral hemisphere, showing diffuse cerebral edema. In late stages, edema will be followed with characteristic diffuse cerebral hemiatrophy and gliosis. In geography, is usually normal but might show the narrowing, or narrowing of the caliber of the cells. Close differential diagnosis is Rasmussen's encephalitis, which include inflammatory neurodegenerative disease of unknown etiology that causes severe chronic unihemispheric disease of CPS, which is usually seen in children less than 10 years of age and causes progressive cognitive decline, neurological deterioration, and intractable seizures of CPS. Treatment include mainly in uh, early acute phases, supportive treatment. In short term, most children do well. Once the initial stress of epilepticus is removed, most effective way to prevent post-convulsive hemiplegia is early and aggressive termination of seizure. For non-respondent patients, surgical intervention can be advised. Differential diagnosis to be considered for cerebral hemiatrophy include HHG syndrome, Rasmussen's encephalitis, sturge weber syndrome, infections or inflammatory changes like unihemispheric cerebral vasculitis, cerebral infarctions, hypoxic ischemic insufficiency, hemimegalencephaly, and hemiatrophy with developmental venous arthritis, post-traumatic these are my demographic and clinical choice. In conclusion, HHG is a rare clinical syndrome of infancy or early childhood associated with cerebral hemiatrophy and transient or permanent epilepsy as sequelae to the prolonged stress. MRI aids in early recognition and initiation, initiating seizure control, which is of utmost importance to prevent the development of hemiplasia and intractable disease. These are my references. Thank you.